If we say that our, that our, our work always starts with a series of uh, anarchic exploration, it has to do with our name. We call ourselves Productora. I think Productora just basically is meant for a, a company that produces. And normally they use it for a film or for a publicity. But uh, in, in, in our case, we use Productora as a sort of a, as a method, a way of working, uh, in the sense that when you are confronted with this typical problem of a white uh, sheet of paper in front of you, a new project, a white sheet of paper, uh, we think that the only way to, to make headway with funds is like to start uh, doing whatever, producing whatever. You know? you start to produce series of models, drawings, um, although in a certain beginning you don't really know where you're going to. These first uh, very intuitive uh, tryouts attempts they become a sort of a, a guiding line, sort of a starting point. Oh, a little bit is uh, again talking about the production. I mean, and the method that we try to apply to our architecture is is just like trying to make just architecture. I mean, we don't want to be like an artist or something else. I mean, we just want to make architecture with the qualities of it. I mean, we know that. And it's very interesting that we are designers of uh, like empty. I mean, we design the space that is between walls, between floor, between this. I mean, that is what we want to do, and our activities just about that. I mean, just to me to, to understand what is about the architecture. I mean, uh, the the things that we have, the technology that we have, and the sometimes the vendors. Sometimes the clients, sometimes, I mean, we have like a kind of tools that uh, help us to, to design, but at the end, we understand that we are architects, I mean, we are not, nothing else than like that, so we want to use the tools that architecture give us in order to design and to make objects, to play with the shadows, to, to play with the shapes, to the perspective, and all that kind of things that just correspond to the architecture that is our like a kind of role that we are doing. I think everything, everything is an excuse to make architecture. That's a bit, uh, I think that's a bit what it's about. Like for example, when your clients ask you to do a bathroom, of course you're not interested in doing a bathroom. When they ask you to do a house or a building, you're not interested in doing a specific building. If they ask you to do a, for example, to do a call center or they do an office building, it's not really, uh, the specific programmatic needs not really what you're interested in. Everything you use as an excuse to make architecture. If you say I want a lamp or I want a bathroom or it doesn't matter. Because finally you want to make architecture. That's the same thing what happened here. You know, they also present something in New York. You say, okay, how can we represent a project? It's it's not an interesting question of how to represent a project. Nice thing you start thinking, oh let's cut up all our molds into one millimeter plates. You know? Like uh, plates of one millimeter. And of course, it's a, it's a quite absurd idea because it doesn't really uh, give an, uh, a specific lecture about the project. It doesn't really add uh, any value to to explain this project or this project or this project by layers of one millimeter. No, again, it's sort of a, sort of exercise we like, and that's the same thing what happens when you do a, when you get a commission. It's uh, sort of uh, an excuse to start making something. Uh, this is a house built in Chihuahua. It's, in a, it's like a cold place at night, but it's a sunny place. It's, it's kind of yes, and the idea was that the earth has like this kind of qualities to, to keep the the when it's cold when it's cold the the, the weather the, 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 the earth keeps the, the the house warm. And in the, other, in the other way, I mean, when it's cold, when it's hot, sorry, it keeps like in a good temperature. So the idea was to put half of the house on the ground. But when we do that, we have to resolve like a kind of questions that they were about views, ventilation, or uh, illumination. So we decided to put patios uh, over the house in order to. to that uh, qualities that we were looking for, and that, that is why at the end it looks like a topography because 
in some way we have to adapt the house to this condition to be on the ground and then to, to give these qualities of light to get the light from the nation all this stuff. So I think it was the result of the house. Maybe an interesting thing of this project is also, and actually more projects have it, that for example at the street side, this house is a very, uh, very simple uh, volume. Basically, watching from here, you have a very simple uh, facade of uh, one floor height. And then later when you enter the house, it becomes a sort of a, a more um, a sculptural or, or labyrinthic uh, experience, where you have like uh, the, the ceilings that, that uh, slope down uh, towards the, the topography of the terrain. And, and we think it's very interesting sometimes to like uh, hide your architecture a little bit. Uh, actually, the same thing happens in, the, in the Lima, where the whole museum is built uh, in the Museum for Not Contemporary Art in Lima, where the whole museum is built underground, and only on top you get a sort of clue that something is happening there, but you don't really know. And actually, the same thing happens in this house. Although this volume is very expressive, uh, very very formal at the street facade, it's, it's uh, the original facade was never removed, so it's uh, it's a typical middle class uh, Mexican. Uh, house you see from the, from the street. No, and of course architecture is in a difficult moment. I think the whole world is in a difficult moment. I think uh, uh, when you see, uh, if you see architecture through, through uh, different periods, there was always a sort of uh, ideology, you know, like in, uh, the modern movement had this whole idea about a, a new man and a modern man and how could we create a new and industrialized uh, houses for them. Um, afterwards, but afterwards, basically, they've been adapting that concept and they put in sociologists of the 70s and anthropologists and, uh, and urbanists. And, and, and basically, nowadays, there is not a real discourse in a sort of ideological sense about architecture. And of course, that's why a lot of offices they, they feel it's necessary to, to go back to the formal uh, aspect. It's not a sort of victory. It's more, more a sort of defeat, I think, in a certain sense that the only thing that's left to do is, uh, is to talk about this, uh, about this form and this ex experience of space. Therefore, the, the, the phenomenological aspect of space, like space for itself, huh? as is, is a discourse that's, that's, uh, that, that, is, that's, uh, that has a lot of attention now in architecture. I don't think it's... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's, I think there's no other option.